Hi, here we're asked to predict whether a precipitate will form when aqueous solutions of the following compounds are mixed. Write a net ionic equation. In the first one here, we have an aqueous solution of iron 2 chloride and potassium hydroxide. So we mix them together, and the question is, will a precipitate form? Well, let's go ahead and replace the iron here with the potassium. So we'll write that on this side. So what we're going to end up with is potassium chloride. Make sure that you write the formula correctly. And then we'll go ahead and replace the potassium and the potassium hydroxide with the iron two. So we're going to end up with uh, iron two hydroxide. Again, you have to make sure that you write the formulas correctly. Now, this equation here is not balanced, so we'll go ahead and balance it. Here on this side, we have two chlorines. So I'm going to put a two in front of the potassium chloride, and here we have two hydroxides. So I will put a two right here. So now we have a balanced equation. So what we need to do is check our solubility rules. And from the solubility rules, we find out the potassium chloride is indeed soluble. So we're going to write this as aqueous because in the solution, the potassium chloride is going to exist as potassium and chloride ions. Now, again, looking at the solubility rules, I see that iron 2 hydroxide is insoluble. So that means when we mix these two solutions together, what the iron and iron two ions, I should say, and the hydroxide ions will be very attracted to each other and form a precipitate. So here I'm going to put a solid. So yes, in this case, a precipitate does form. But we're asked to write a net ionic equation. So let's go ahead and write the full ionic equation. And here we have iron two chloride aqueous. So that means that we have iron two ions plus chloride ions plus, and you have to make sure that you um, include your coefficients here. Uh, potassium hydroxide is also aqueous, so that means we have potassium ions plus two hydroxide ions. Now, let's go to the other side. And as we said, the potassium chloride will also be in the solution as ions. So we're going to have two potassium ions plus two chloride here. And of course, our ion 2 hydroxide is solid, so um, we have to leave that as the solid. So this here is my ionic equation, and let me write that out for you. So this is my ionic equation. So now what I want is the net ionic equation. And notice that I have chloride ions on both sides. They cancel out. And also the potassium ions cancel out. So the chloride and the potassium ions are called spectator ions. They don't directly participate in the chemical reaction. So let's go ahead and write our net ionic equation. So we're left with iron 2 plus the hydroxide ions to give us iron 2 hydroxide. Here, I forgot the 2 here. Okay. So the reaction was between the iron 2 ions and the hydroxide ions to form solid iron 2 oxide. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. And here we're going to do the same thing. Let me change colors here. 
So uh, we have an aqueous solution of lead nitrate and an aqueous solution of potassium sulfate. So we mix the two together. Let's see what happens between the ions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the lead in the lead nitrate here with potassium. So let me write that out. So I have to write out the formula for potassium nitrate. Okay, and that's the correct formula. And I'll replace the potassium with the lead for lead sulfate. And lead sulfate is written like so. So from our solubility rules, we know that potassium nitrate is soluble. So it will exist in solution as potassium nitrate ions. And we find that lead sulfate is insoluble. So we um, actually have a solid here. So yes, a precipitate did form. So now let's go ahead and write out the ionic equation. And I'll go ahead and change colors here. And let's start with the lead nitrate. So we have the lead ions plus there are two nitrate ions here. And potassium sulfate. So we have two potassium ions. And there's something we did forget to do. We forgot to balance our equation. Um, so we'll just put the two in front of the potassium nitrate. It's all balanced now. And we have sulfate ions. And here we have two potassium ions and two nitrate ions. And of course, our lead sulfate is a solid, so we have to just keep that as is. So let's take a look at both sides of our equation here. And notice that we have nitrate ions on both sides. They cancel out. And also potassium ions that cancel. So now I can go ahead and write my net ionic equation. What do I have left? I have lead ion and sulfate ion to produce lead sulfate, or solid lead sulfate. Um, so in this case here, our spectator ions were the potassium ions and the nitrate ions. So again, they didn't participate in the uh, chemical reaction. It was the lead ion and the sulfate ion combining to form the solid lead sulfate.